clicked away. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Key with Scotty and me today. Johnny is on vacation, but we've got a special guest, and I'll let uh, Scott introduce him because he's been working with him for uh, centuries, I mean decades. Yeah. <laughs> Just make, make us all that much older. So uh, doing things a little bit different uh, today, we have uh, Steve Hayes with uh, Workhorse uh, on with us. Uh, Steve and I have been personal friends in the industry uh, for quite a while, and Steve is a, uh, or, you know, still kind of is because you never stop being an audio video integrator. Um, so Steve's an integrator with a different spin on something, and uh, we wanted to kind of share part of that because some of that uh, plays into key digital product and Steve having his locations and areas of his offices, which use a lot of our uh, key digital products. So uh, we wanted to bring Steve in a little bit to talk about what he's doing and how it kind of relates to everything, uh, kind of back around to everything. So, you know, welcome, Steve, and we're glad that you have some time to join us today. Before we get yeah. going too far, we also have to get our plug oh, in. I have, I have my coffee from <laughs> uh, Loveless Cafe today in Music City, USA, which is all over the news because of the debate tonight. Not picking sides, just mentioning it. So if you're in Music City, though, Loveless, breakfast is incredible. Fried chicken is incredible. But they're well known for their biscuits. Cleta Faye, the biscuit lady, and unfortunately, we lost her a few years ago. But the biscuit recipe is alive and well. So stop in at the uh, Loveless Cafe on the uh, west side of Nashville next time you're in Music City. I gotta okay, get now, to now we can send the bill. Yeah, I got I to gotta get some better cups because I do these standard you know. Yeah, and I don't Duncan. think they're going to sponsor us. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, I'll send you one of these. Uh-oh. That, that is the best. Uh, Steve had a, a, a social media post on LinkedIn um, and had a laptop uh, with that sticker on it. And I was like, that, that is like the perfect thing for all, all of us in this industry. Um, you know, but that just definitely, that made me, you know, laugh. When I saw that first thing in the morning, I was like, I was like, this is great. <laughs> I'll take words to live by. I got a lot of them, so if you, I, I'm glad to send them down to you. Yeah. <laughs> or up to you, I should say. So, well, uh, welcome, Steve. And you were sharing a little bit of your story earlier, and I'm really excited to uh, for you to share it on Coffee with Key this morning. So, um, why don't you give us a give us a little uh, quick synopsis of how you got to what you're doing today and and what that is because it's very exciting. I think there's a lot of our audience out there that might be interested in your services uh, with your uh, software and et cetera. Sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously thanks for having me. Um, so I got into consumer electronics in 1999. I was a, a audio video salesman at a regional chain. We had six retail stores in New Jersey. And uh, in 2004, uh, I left the company, went to the Marine Corps, came back. And within a year, I saw the company was having, you know, some financial issues and kind of on their way out. And I said, you know what, like, I've been doing this for so long. I always wanted to do it on my own. So instead of going to work for somebody else or riding out the wave there, I decided, you know what, uh, I'm going to start my own company. So I started my own alarm and integration company in New Jersey. And one of the things I realized really quickly was I needed like seven different softwares to run my company. I need field service management, I need CRM, I need bookkeeping, I need my email, I need my DocuSign, I needed a, a, a quoting software, and I need like all these different things. And even then, I was still stuck with uh, handwritten service tickets and, you know, full manila folders full of, you know, all, all the product details, what we did, Google Drive and, you know, Dropbox with pictures and all this stuff. And it, it really just meant that we were being less efficient than we should be. So three years ago, uh, I stepped away from having my own integrator integration company. I moved to Florida so uh, I could be in beautiful weather all the time. And uh, we, we started getting to work on Workhorse. And, and Workhorse is everything that I just said for the most part. So it's, it's uh, you know, how you make your sales. It's how you follow up with your customers. It's how you, uh, you know, when a customer calls in, how you know everything that's installed there what you've done for them in the past, all of the service tickets that you've run. 
Uh, and one of the other biggest parts to it is that, you know, we're the way that you get to charge your customer or set up service calls or annual service plans right inside of the software. And, and these recurring payments just happen and they run. And we truly encourage anybody with our software, whether it be a technician, a customer service rep, a salesperson, an admin, whoever it happens to be, a way to just collect money from people, right? Like one of the biggest problems small integrators has other than, you know, being uh, completely unorganized is that they, they don't have a real easy way to know who owes you what, why they owe you, for what. If we do a service call, how much is that service call even worth? Because your technicians are, for some reason, don't collect it. And, you know, we're like the redheaded stepchildren of the service trades. And what I mean by that is like, you know, even like our technicians, you know, uh, fail to see why they would collect money, right? And I, you know, I, I assume, I know Scott, you're a homeowner, but uh, Dwayne, I know you're, I'm assuming you're a homeowner. Uh -huh. Has there ever been a plumber that's come to your house <laughs> and not left without you paying for your services? Actually, Dwayne, Dwayne's got a good story on a plumber. <laughs> uh, just, just happened a month ago, and they, they usually take at least one or two appendages with them, you know, an arm and a leg, so... <laughs> But, but yeah, but, but that's exactly it, right? Like we, we as an industry, for some reason, it's like, no, you know, Steve will bill you later. You know, this will happen later. So, you know, I'll get, I'll get this paperwork back to Scott. Scott will fill it, figure it out. And, you know, by the time it gets from my van to Scott's desk, for him to say, all right, well, 85, 85 for this, $125 an hour, this, this, and that it's already lost its value because you're not sending this invoice for, you know, two to three weeks most of the time. But Steve, we do to, it automatically. Steve, not to cut you off, but is this app related to, so a field technician, because I, I got a great scenario for you. Uh, if this is app related, probably like when Dwayne and I, God forbid somebody has something wrong with the product, they'll reach out, hey Scott, hey Dwayne, there's something wrong here, I'm not sure. We'll go through and say, hey, I'll get an RMA started for you. We get our RMA team involved. The first question we ask is, hey, what's the serial number on that unit? And I would yeah. say maybe three people out of 10 will be like, oh, I took a picture of it. Oh, uh, I'm not going to be back to that site until next week. You right. know, so it's like, ah, and then you want to be able to help them out, send out the advanced replacement. We have our normal procedure, protocols, everything else. So without upsetting the rest of the team, it's like the starting place for us is that serial number. Yeah. So, I mean, we're a, a web-based app. So, you know, no matter what device you're on, the it conforms to what it is. So it's not an app. It doesn't live on your phone. It doesn't use your phone's hard drive for that kind of stuff. But what it does do is that, you know, it reaches out to, uh, you know, the cloud for all of the latest and greatest information. But okay. what we do, another thing that separates us is that, when you say that you have um, uh, a KBS Ballon behind a TV, right? You can take a picture of it, record the serial number, MAC address, uh, you know, if you got a, a tag number or anything like that, that, that information that you need for that advanced replacement. Because when we're having that issue, and we see it a lot with cameras, right? MAC address, serial number, IP address, usernames, passwords, like we wanna keep that stuff. Because when you're having that issue out in the field, you can try to troubleshoot it with Mr. or Mrs. Jones and say, hey, look, you know, I know I can't come out there. Let me just send a reset to that switch. Let me try doing this to that port. It's still not working okay. I know it's going to be the receiver end of this. Um, you know, let me get you an advanced replacement. But to your point, you know, you don't want to just keep on sending out, uh, hopefully you don't send out any advanced replacements and everything's yeah. good. But, you know, the truth of the matter is that RMAs happen and that's a part of life. Um, but when an RMA happens, you want to make sure that, you know, everything is really, uh, you know, you, you have the most information the first time through, right? But what also happens right there is like, you know, you send out an advanced replacement of a piece and now you put a new install date on that part, right? Mm -hmm. And because that has a new install date on the part, well, the rest of it lives by that old, um, by, by that old contract date, that old three year yeah. uh, or one year advanced replacement, now this new part, you know, is extended beyond that, but it's a way for, you know, you to track it, them to track and everybody to have it on board. Yeah, like that, that, that was part of the reason when uh, Steve first had talked about this, 
and having the background in the uh, audio video industry uh, is the little things that we think of, you know, all of us, I would say, are veterans, you know, within there, Steve truly being a veteran. Um, the knowing like those little quirky things, you know, yeah. that it's like, oh, wow, only if I, you know, so th this was great. And this is kind of what I want to bring Steve in because yeah, well, the way he's looking at everything, it's like a different approach. You know, and, I, and I love your approach because I think people don't realize uh, in our industry, I mean, I have, it was very interesting a year and a half ago when I came over to Key Digital, I was, I've been integrated for over two decades myself prior to coming to Key Digital. I was a uh, Key Digital dealer for 10 years. And um, when I started visiting uh, other integrators, guys I'd known, I'm, you know, I'd see them at Infocom or CD or whatever, I've known them for years, but I hadn't necessarily been to their place or whatever um, because you know, I didn't live in the same town. And, and you go into, and you know the type of clients they're doing, you know the type of business they're doing, and you go into one and they've got this huge, just like you have, you know, they're doing monitoring and they're charging $850 a month uh, to a church to monitor all their AV. Now this is a little different than your CRM, but similar because then they can send that monthly or they just actually just ACH that monthly recurring payment. And, uh, and then, and you know, of course they have to staff up and be 24 seven, whatever, but then you go to somebody else that has, is just leaving that part of the money on the table and uh you know they do the they do it they'll still send the text out sometimes they'll charge sometimes they won't sometimes they you know and then like you said they get the bill three four weeks later and they're like i don't remember him being here that long did it well you, you know yep. and if they didn't get him to sign the paper that said i arrived here i arrived there or you know uh it's everything digital is much better than having to have everything analog so uh but people need to understand uh the value of the recur I mean, we just went through a pandemic. Well, mm -hmm. when I was uh, doing my previous life, uh, when we went through the uh, 2008 uh, crisis, you know, recur, those bills kept, you know, that, that, that money kept coming in, you yeah. know, unless a, unless a business closed. I mean, that's a different story, right. but, you know, and we were talking thousands of locations for a service that we, we sold. And, uh, and that was amazing where others were really, really floundering. So, you know, everybody's got to look all the way around. But the key is, like you said, you've built a CRM for our industry, not a CRM for the IT industry or for the accounting industry. I mean, you built it more targeted to the AV industry and integrators specifically, if, if I'm hearing you right. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. We started... You know, we, we started really alarms first. There was a really big need in alarms. And, you know, there's, you know, uh, 14,000 plus alarm companies out there. And that, that was my bread and butter, right? Like I knew that when, as an integrator, I was, a uh, we had a C4 shop showroom, you know, the whole nine yards uh, in New Jersey. Um, but it, it was like, we just didn't have that proper way to run it. And, and I learned how important recurring was through the alarm side, right? So you take you take that and now you need to transpose it into uh you know the integration side right so you know a lot of these companies out there you know that the, the people complain about uh being like diy you know have also already set the precedence that there's a cost to most of this per month and whether theirs is ten dollars per month and yours is more expensive they've at least got people knowing that there's going to be some sort of cost of this Per month and it's the value that you sell on top of that that really makes the the customer be okay with spending you know a hundred dollars a month two hundred dollars three hundred dollars a month and you know look you know commercial the different uh you know like a church right like that's a commercial industrial you know that that that's a completely different world and those people have been selling rmr for a long time and service plans but it's getting the regular integrator that you know, five hundred thousand dollar a year guy, that uh, you know, million dollar a year company, to understand that they need to, you know, stop buying jobs and start selling jobs and selling service plans with them. And Absolutely. once you can do that, and you put these service plans in place, you know, like you said, you know, RMR is going to save you in those tough times. Yeah, exactly. Like, a good point is, uh, you know, 
the general public too is if you were confident and knew somebody was running a program like a business um customer relations is huge here so you could go back and mr smith was like well hey what day were you here you're going to have all the documentation to make him feel warm and fuzzy too so you know monitoring and stuff like that something that would be cost to an end user i think would have more of a peace of mind realizing that you have everything there and be like hey you know what in a quarter you can discuss it and say you know what here's your current service agreement i was here x amount of times you could show the value call it out uh you know if somebody ever needed anything via insurance hey uh you know if there was a fire or something god forbid um is you would be able to show that so i would have yep. i i would feel more comfortable working with somebody that had that type of infrastructure in place because you know, you can discuss it or bring it out because you're going to be able to go or any of your clients that are using it, be able to go back to somebody and say, here, here's where we're sitting. You know, Bill was there on Tuesday. Oh, you know, what happened? Was it the day before, the day after, you know, to be able to, uh, the peace of mind. That's why I always tag peace of mind to any type of warranty or, you know. The, the, yeah. the funny thing you say about that is, you know, another, another, uh, thing that we do is we tag service calls to the products being installed right so if you're if, if i go to your house for your camera system today and i send you a bill right you get a 200 dollars bill and you call me up and you're like hey, steve your tech's on site he's trying to charge me 200 bucks you guys were here three times last month what the heck right like yeah. that that happens kind of often with these with these big systems and i say hey scott you know we were there three times last week but i can see that we were there for you know, audio video, I could see that we were there for your alarm system. I can see that we were there for three unrelated things than your camera system. Yep. Exactly. If I don't have that, yeah. you're more than not me, but it, but if the customer service rep or, you know, somebody else doesn't have that, you know, that, that's, that's really what's going to save your butt and get you paid, you know? Yep. And the other, the other nice thing is we also offer other things on top of that, you know, that, that help you get paid too with like, uh, we have like, um, uh, like answering services, right? So we'll take you know, during the day, we don't do overnight 24 seven answering services, but during the day, if you're on workforce, you can have a customer call up. We answer the phone, you know, ABC, ABC integrators, can I help you? And I can look up Mrs. Jones and I can find all Mrs. Jones stuff. And I don't have to bother you while you're on your ladder. I don't have to bother you while you're trying to make a sale or doing whatever it is that you're, that you need to be doing. Yeah, so for these like three, you know, three man shows, you know, five man shows, um, it's it's uh, I mean, it's a huge, huge benefit right there. And because we're the masters of the software, we're making sure that we're entering in that information correctly too. And we make sure that if we show that somebody owes you a hundred dollars, that you get that hundred that, that we're asking for that hundred dollars. You know, yeah. we put in the notes. You know, customer called in, requested a service call, wants to talk to Steve. Um, you know, asked to pay bill of $100, refused to give new credit card number, right? So we're always going to try to collect that money for you. So it's, again, it's just in a, in a, in immediate, you know, uh, you're, you're immediately getting the best users of workforce on your team. Yeah, Stephen, what I'm hearing you say also too, is you've got the plethora of information. So I can attest uh, from a management perspective, if you've got guys like I had, um, four team members that all they did was handle service, incoming service uh, calls from right. across the country. Because when you have a thousand, thousands of accounts, you're going to get pretty busy. And then when somebody calls in and says, well, I don't remember that tech being here that day, then from a management perspective, you can look in and go, yes, uh, our tech was there. So-and-so signed the tag. Oh, that's my system manager. She didn't tell me that, 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 that kind of thing. Right. But you don't have to bother your service guys and take them away to go back and look at the notes and then they can keep doing what they're doing, et cetera. So information. And, and chances, are, power. chances are they don't even remember it. You know, like they, they, you know, a service guy goes to five different houses every single day. He doesn't remember which house he went to and, you know, and what he did there on that day, you know, so not, not only would we show, not, not only would we show, um, you know, that, you know, uh, Scott was there from this time to this time and that Jane signed off on it, but we could also even geolocate or we'd also do geolocate. So you can see he was there, he signed off on it and you know, it happened right at that location. 
So there's yeah. no there's no question about you know were we re were we really on site? What did we really do? Now look, uh, the alarm world is a little bit different, right? Because we put things on tests, we do other things, but AV when and especially res resi AV to you know like like commercial, you know the, these people are a lot of times tight to the pocket and, and really watch over everything that you're doing. So you need to come prepared to the table with, we were there, we punched in at this time from right in front of your house coordinates and we left and we completed the job right in front of your house. These are the coordinates and these are the coordinates that, you know, Jane signed from, right? So there's not really a question of, did she sign it? Where did you actually punch in and out of? And where was it from? We know all of that stuff. This is what we did while we were there, which Jane also signed off on. <laughs> yep, exactly. Which all this, like going back to, I hate saying it, going back to customer relations again. So nowadays with everything being so crazy, somebody's going to be very mindful of their money, not know what's going to happen or what other shoe's going to drop tomorrow, is at least they have somebody or, you know, they're working with somebody that could show them everything. You could sit down and discuss it calmly or whatever and say, hey, you have a problem with this? This is great. One thing I thought of, Steve, when we were going back and forth and you uh, logging all this information was having the ability of you um you know other than us as key digital you could log products that are in certain situations so mm -hmm. you could actually be a supplier of information to other manufacturers dealers or you know stuff out there saying you know uh whatever product abc you know i have a database a bunch of guys use these and you know a failure rate success rate this and that you know what i mean so you could actually also assist other people debugging stuff too so that, i thought that was kind of interesting when it first kind of came up yeah you know? i like that i mean we, so we are you know we are the holders of a lot of information so i think we i think we already have most if not all of the kds product line you know on our side right so you can know uh switches balance cameras you know the whole nine yards um what they are a picture of them you know the data sheets on them all that kind of stuff um, I do like, though, I think that's a pretty cool idea of being able to, again, being the, you know, being the holders of a lot of information, yeah. if we can, if we can have a failure rate or, you know, even like a buy through rate, right? Like, I mean, that's, yep. that's different stuff for everybody to know about, you know, yeah, it's, it's like, it's almost like your own, uh, Google analytics, or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, like, yeah. Hey, yeah, look, look, I've got whatever, you know, 2,500 customers that are using product A. I just thought it was such a unique concept other than like when we talk about EB stuff or anything like that is like how you progressed into this. So this is part of the reason, completely different than we normally do of why I wanted to have you on because it is how you uh, progressed in you know, what, what, what you're doing now with SES, which I think is a value to uh, you know, manufacturers, uh, Salespeople like my, Dwayne and I, um, down to the regular, uh, you know, consumer. So it, it kind of covers everything across the board. There's a little bit of something for everyone in there. Well, you saw a need in the uh, in in not necessarily our industry, but like you said, you started in the alarm industry, the service industry, you know, yep. uh, service and technology industry. And um, and matter of fact, the CRM we used previously was made for the IT industry initially. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, it's very, uh, I think it's very enlightening to know there's uh, this option out there. Hopefully some of our dealers will get in contact with you, go to workhorsescs.com and check you out. And, um, you know, and stop leaving uh, money on the table and, and basically clean up the you know the details and um, and information is power, and uh, I think it's just amazing what you've developed here. I, I uh, look forward to uh, digging in a little more on it. Yeah, thanks. It's been a it's been a crazy couple of years getting it launched, but as soon as it did, we were uh, we, we were pretty well taken by the industries, um, just because they you know they didn't have anything else out there. There's a there's a quoting software that's made for our industry. There's a project management software that's made for our industry. There's no field service management. There's no CRM that's made for our industry. So we, we fit like this, uh, you know, this big need, right? Like quoting is only part of it. You know, you have to follow up with all of your, 
you have to follow up with all of your customers. You have to keep them going and you have to know what's going on there. And you know, like you said, knowledge is power. And, you yeah. know, if we put that all in front of you, that that's the important thing. So for, for an integrator that may be interested in your software, let me just ask a couple of questions. Does, do you integrate with traditional accounting software packages like Sage, QuickBooks, et cetera? QuickBooks Online. Yeah. So we have a, we have a complete integration with QuickBooks Online. So it's a one-to-one. Uh, okay. So every customer you enter into Workhorse automatically gets put into um, uh, QuickBooks Online. Then every invoice and every payment goes back and forth. Yeah, oh, that's good. Inventory management as well through that. What's that? I'm sorry. Inventory management through that as well through. No, like, you know QuickBooks. we don't we don't have inventory management out yet, and the whole re the reason that we don't have inventory management yet is because we could have put out something that's crappy like everybody else has, but right. I didn't want to. And I didn't want to hear it from people. So like our inventory management goes back to me working retail and being part of like this huge, uh, by the time, by the time I left, uh, the company, I was a director of security and learning about inventory management and transfers and trucks and this, that, and the other thing. And, and, you know, does it get put on a shelf and does it, is it in a bin? And, you know, I, I learned more in the, you know, that year and a half than, uh, you know, uh, just about anything, but, um, so the, the inventory that we're doing is I would transfer it to Scott. Scott would need to sign off on it. Uh, I need to sign off on it first. Scott signs off on it. Now all that inventory is on his truck. He goes out and does an install, a service call, whatever it happens to be. That inventory now falls out of his truck automatically once it's completed. And that's the part of it that nobody's gotten done yet. And again, it's because people make inventory products for not our industry. Yeah, right. This has to be for our industry. Okay. So we're, we're, we're hoping to launch a Q2 of next year. Okay, sounds good. Well, anything else we've missed on uh, your feature sets and things of that nature? I know, I know you've got a kind of a short timeline here. I don't want to hold you too long. Yeah, I, I've got a, a call coming up in a minute. But uh, no, I mean, look, we're, we're, we're the way that you run your company, right? We're, we're, we're the way that you interact with your customers and and the, the, the best way for you to uh, take in all of the information from all around and really be able to, you know, manage your customers' expectations. Because by you managing your customers' expectations, those customers are going to be around for longer. The problem that we have is we don't manage those customers' expectations and they find another integrator because anybody can hang a TV on their wall or so they think. But if we go out there and we, we are the professionals, and we dress as the professionals and we have our website that's professional and our answering that's professional, you know, people are willing to stay with you a lot longer. And, you know, when you're like, hold on, Mrs. Jones, I got to go find you. Then you're looking her up in Dropbox and checking your old emails and you call her back three days later. You know, Mrs. Jones has probably already made the decision. She's ready to move on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, you know, like <laughs> you know, you're all set. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it it's funny to have so many different products. I mean, I, I know we're all guilty of it. And myself and Dwayne have multiple places, you know, your own handwritten notes, like you said, Dropbox, this and that. Not, not to plug everybody, but you have so many different places that you put it. So then you have to realize where did I put it? <laughs> you know, so you're right. Yeah, well, you're burning time. It's like, okay, is, is, it in, is, it in, yeah. is it in my filing cabinet? Is it over here? Is it over there? Yeah. But we, we take all your pictures and all your pictures get stored with it. So when you show back up and you know, the customer's like, no, 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 I didn't touch this. You say, well, look, this is, you know, this is what it looked like when we left though. Yeah. You know, or, uh, you know, or, um, it's another big one. Like, uh, you know, I, I've got Comcast. Well, no, you actually had, you had Fios when we left. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, like this this emitter is not on, it fell off my TV. Well, that's an LG, and you had a Samsung when we installed yeah. it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the, and, and but but if you don't know that, right, your your technician's going to be like, "Hey, Dwayne, I'm over here. Yeah, man, the emitter fell off the TV. Uh, you know, how are we going to bill for this? And uh, for some reason, our technicians always stick up for the customer, not for us. Um, yeah. Well, but, it's the path of least resistance, I know. You know, because yeah. they're right there giving them a hard time. So. Yeah, but so yeah, so again, not knowledge is power, and how and and Absolutely. if you have that, and you say, hey, you know, 
hey, Dwayne, look, man, it wasn't, it, this is LG. It was the Samsung when we left. He's like, all right, you got me. Yeah, yeah. And then he said, <laughs> He, I mean, you, you obviously don't want to nitpick, but at least, I mean, these are good, you know, good valid examples. Well, so, it makes it billable or not billable. You know? Yeah. Right. So, real, real quick, Steve, before we wrap it up so you can make uh, your call. So, I was looking at your decorations behind you there. <laughs> so, instead of the uh, standard yeah. bookcase, I don't know if Dwayne noticed that you have so a little equalizer. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, so, geez. So everybody, you know, like I, I go on webinars all day, uh, you know, and everybody's got a bookshelf behind them. I didn't have a bookshelf, so I took my uh, AT4 rocket launcher, it's, and I put a book on top. But, uh, obviously, there is no rocket inside of it. It is in the uh, inert ordinance, and it is only a fiberglass tube. So please don't call, uh, you know. The yeah, absolutely. Moment. We don't want to. Don't want yeah, 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 yeah. We're not. You know, yeah. it's, it's better to have that disclosure. I thought that was for formatting hard drives. I was like, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right. I really appreciate it, Steve. I know you got to take a call. I appreciate you taking the time. We did something a little different here today. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, a little different spin. So maybe uh, we can get Steve on a later date. Uh, back on discuss some other stuff. And uh, we hope everybody has a, a splendid day today. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Steve. Great to meet you. Thank you. All right. Be well, everybody.